Hi, I'm Carmen LaBerge. Thanks for listening to the podcast of Mornings with Carmen LaBerge. Happy Thanksgiving, and thanks for listening to this special Best of Mornings with Carmen LaBerge on Faith Radio. If we're gonna fly, we fly like eagles, arms out wide. If we're gonna fear, we fear no evil. We will rise by your power. We will go by your spirit. We are bold. If we're gonna stand, we stand as giants. If we're gonna walk, we walk as lions. Good morning and happy Thanksgiving. You are listening to a special edition of Mornings with Carmen. I hope you are already having a wonderful Thanksgiving day. I hope you are giving thanks to the Lord, our God. I hope you are turning to the Lord with thanksgiving in every circumstance, wherever you are, whatever you're up to, wherever you're headed. I hope that you are giving thanks to the Lord, our God, because he is good. He is good. I want to talk this morning a little bit about the games we play with God. Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving weekend, the holidays in general, give us opportunities to get together And sometimes we have uh, families that play games together. And so that's what got me thinking about this. But what are the games that we play with God? So starting in the Garden of Eden, we've been playing hide and seek, (laughs) right? You know, the story begins where, you know, we're walking with God in the cool of the day. That is awesome. And then uh, there is this fall into temptation and ultimately into sin, which you could think of actually as a domino, a game of dominoes where you line them up and they all fall over. Um, You could think of dominoes, the domino effect of sin actually coming before the game of hide and seek. But I digress. Ultimately, the game of hide and seek begins and God shows up to walk with Adam in the cool of the day. And Adam is hiding from God because he is aware of his nakedness um, and he is ashamed. And so he's hiding and God says, Adam, where are you? Which, of course, God would know where Adam was and he would know why Adam was hiding, but he dignifies Adam by asking. And Adam says, we're hiding. God says, why are you hiding? Well, because we're ashamed. Well, who, why are you ashamed? Because we're naked. Well, who told you you were naked? Like, obviously they, there's some information being provided here that, that is not God oriented. So anyway, the game of hide and seek began. And since then, God has been seeking to save the lost. Jesus actually comes as the one uh, who came to seek and to save the lost. Just think about that. We talk, think about games of hide and seek. What other games are we playing with God? Well, you could think of hide and seek from another vantage point as lost and found. Jesus came to seek and to save what? Well, the lost. That they might be what? Well, that they might be found. So if you're playing hide and seek with God today, let me encourage you to allow yourself to be found. And one of the things I love about the game of hide and seek, and I didn't actually know this as a child, I thought that at the end of the game, when the seeker hadn't successfully found somebody who was hiding, and they called out that, well, I thought it was Ali Ali Oxen Free. <laughs> Ali Ali Oxen Free. That's what it sounded like to me, but it's actually all in, all in, all in free, which is a statement of grace. And so maybe you need to hear that today. Maybe you need to hear Jesus who came to seek and to save the lost. Maybe you need to hear him call out to you, all in, all in, all in free. Aren't you ready to be found? Aren't you tired of hiding? Today's Growing Your Faith verse of the day comes from John chapter 12. Jesus is speaking here, and he says, those who love their life in this world will lose it. Those who care nothing for their life in this world will keep it for eternity. Anyone who wants to serve me must follow me, because my servants must be where I am, and the Father will honor anyone who serves me. These verses are about love and what we love and who we love and how we love. These verses are about what we're clinging to and what we're releasing, what we're willing to lose, and what we gain in Christ. And so I want to focus in on the love of life. We actually want to be people who are lovers of life, just not lovers of life as if our life is ours to own So what does it look like to love in the way that Jesus is talking about loving in a positive way versus the way that he is talking about loving your life in a way that is not God-honoring? Because that's a good question for each of us to ask today. God is love. Um, It is God's nature. Love is God's command to us. Love is God's gift. 
love is the fruit of God's active presence in the life of a believer. And so these kinds of loves are godly loves, love that is patient, love that is kind, love that does not envy or does not boast or is not proud, love that does not dishonor others, is not self-seeking, not easily angered, a love that keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. That's Paul's description of the love of God in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So when Jesus says those who love their life in this world will lose it, what what is he talking about? Because, you know, love is a good thing. Love is a godly thing. Love is God-honoring. Well, not all love is God-honoring. And so the love that flows from God into the believer and through the believer into the lives of others, this is a God-honoring love, but it only blooms when Christ is present. And if love is not present, then Christ is not present. And so how is it that we get out of our own way, we stop hiding from God's pursuing love in Jesus Christ? That's, that's my encouragement to you today. What does it look like? to allow yourself to be loved in order that the life that God wants you to have, a life of love filled with love, expressing love, a conduit of love with the fruit of love, that's the life God wants you to have. But as long as you are a lover of your own life, as if you own your own life, you can't have the love that's offered in Christ Jesus. They don't both fit inside the same person. And so I'm going to encourage you today to stop playing hide-and-seek. If you're lost, allow yourself to be found. And then allow yourself to be kept in the love of Christ from now to eternity. You are listening to Mornings with Carmen. This is a special edition on this Thanksgiving Day. And when we come back, we're going to talk about times of Thanksgiving and giving thanks to God. For whom are you giving thanks to God today? For what are you giving thanks to God today? Are you thanking God in the midst of all circumstances? What are the circumstances that you're facing today that are frankly really hard? It's hard to give God thanks in the midst of um, of what you're facing today. So just recognize that I'm with you and I'm for you in the midst of that. So let's continue having a conversation about Thanksgiving in just a moment. You're listening to Mornings with Carmen. So in um, the time of Thanksgiving, on this day of Thanksgiving, I am giving thanks to God for you. That's right. I am thanking God for you today. Let's consider for a moment the gratitude that the Apostle Paul expressed every time he um, wrote a letter. Here are a few examples. In 1 Corinthians 1-4, Paul says, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus. So I say that over you today, my friend. I give thanks to God always for you because of the grace of God given you in Christ Jesus. Paul says in Ephesians 1, verses 15 and 16, For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. So that's exactly my sense of things today on this Thanksgiving. As you're listening right now, I I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus. I know of your love toward other Christians, toward the saints, and I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers today. Paul says in Philippians 1, verse 3, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you. That's exactly right. Every time God brings you to mind, every time I think about the fellowship that we have here each and every day on Mornings with Carmen at Faith Radio, I give thanks to God for you. Paul says in Colossians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and for the love that you have for all the saints. In Romans six seventeen, Paul says, Thanks be to God, for you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you are committed. And he gives thanks for that. In Philippians 4, 6, Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. I pray with you frequently about your Um, particular requests about the things that lie heavy upon your heart, about the ways in which you are seeking God to intervene in your own life and in the lives of others. And we lift up those prayers before a holy God. Paul says in 2 Timothy 1.3, 
I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers day and night. Imagine for a moment being remembered personally in the prayers of the Apostle Paul. That's actually no different than remembering one another in our prayers right now before the Holy Fa- before God, before uh, the Holy Father. So remember me in your prayers on this day and on this night, and I remember you in my prayers of thanksgiving on this day as well. Just for a moment, consider that Paul is operating out of a very, very rich Jewish heritage. He says there in um, 2 Timothy 1.3, I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors. Paul sees a perfect continuity between his Jewish heritage and his new expression of faith in Christ Jesus as a fulfilled Jew. We would call him a Messianic Jew today. Um, That's who Paul is. And he has a deep, deep knowledge of the Hebrew Scriptures. So Paul's thanksgiving to God, um, when he talks about giving thanks to God in prayer, that's going to be rooted, deeply rooted in the character um, of God expressed not only in Paul's, like, attitude of gratitude, but in a frequent expression of worship to God. Because in the Old Testament, there's really a very, very intimate connection between thanksgiving to God and worship of God. Paul had lots of words available to him, both in Hebrew and in Greek. Like his personal and experiential lexicon is really big. Paul has lots of words. And so I thought it might be interesting to just sample some of the words that Paul uses to express thanksgiving to God. So in Romans 6.17 and 1 Corinthians 15, Paul uses the Greek word charis. It's the beginning of the word charity for us. Charis, gratitude, the divine influence upon the heart that's reflected in the life of the person who is worshiping God. This gift that God has given is then expressed back to God in gratitude. Paul uses a different word for thanksgiving and his prayers of thanks in Ephesians chapter 5. He chooses here the Greek word eucharistio, or eucharista, which obviously is also the root of the word eucharist, to be grateful, to express gratitude, to express gratefulness to God as an act of worship. This is the same word that John uses in John chapter 11 and in Revelation chapter 4. This word eucharistio, or eucharista, for um, giving thanks to God. And then Luke chooses another word to express thanksgiving, In Luke chapter 2, this might be where you and I think most about the word thanksgiving and the way that gratitude spills out in praise and thanksgiving um, in the way Mary expresses her gratitude to God. So what are the words that you use to give thanks to God? What are your thanksgiving words? How do you bless God with the words that you speak? How do you bless God in your prayers? Thanksgiving is an act of worship. It's also a lifestyle. It's not just a day on the calendar. And so on this Thanksgiving day, when without shame, without blushing, we can ask people, what are you thankful for? Well, who is the source of those blessings? Are you giving thanks to the one from whom all blessings flow? How are you rendering Thanksgiving to the one who is the source of every good and perfect gift, the Father of lights? Thanksgiving is, it's not fully realized just by feeling thankful. Thanksgiving is an act directed intentionally toward the one from whom all blessing and every blessing flows. So let us give thanks to God today. Like the Apostle Paul, let us give thanks in all circumstances. Not for all circumstances, but in all circumstances. Paul was in Corinth on his second missionary journey when he wrote those words to the Christians in Thessalonica, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Giving thanks in all circumstances, rejoicing always, praying without ceasing, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So let's follow Paul's lead today as we give thanks to God. Let's make a list of the people of faith that we could encourage today with a note or a letter or a text or an email. Let's reach out to them. I mean, that's what Paul is doing here in writing these letters. He's reaching out to other Christians, and he is encouraging them in the life of faith. Could you do that today on this Thanksgiving? Reach out to a fellow believer in the same way that Paul reached out to encourage the Christians of his day? Could you write a letter of Thanksgiving to someone else today? So 
I have prayed these prayers over you today, these prayers of the Apostle Paul, even as Paul prayed them over his brothers and sisters in Christ in his day. He prayed them over fellow saints in Corinth and Ephesus, Rome, Philippi, Colossae. I pray them over you in St. Paul and in Des Moines. I pray them over you in Minnetonka and in Michigan. I pray them over you in Dunwoody and Tampa. I pray them over you in Fresno uh, and in New York. I give thanks to the Lord our God, and I encourage you to do the same. Who could you pray for today in some other city, some saint somewhere, who needs to be encouraged in their walk of faith, in whatever circumstances they're facing, that you are remembering them before the Lord with thanksgiving for the grace he has shown to them, for their acknowledgement of it, and for the life that they have in Christ. On this Thanksgiving, let us be people who are quick to give thanks to the Lord our God. You're listening to Mornings with Carmen. I'm Carmen LeBurge, host of Mornings with Carmen. Have you noticed that 2023 is coming to a close? It's about over. We're about to turn that calendar page over to 2024. And I don't know about you, but I'm looking for more in 2024. More faith radio, more opportunities to connect faith to life, more friends in Christ walking out their faith together in the world that God so loves. Would you consider learning more about supporting Faith Radio? Visit us at MyFaithRadio.com. One of the things that I really enjoy on Thanksgiving are the songs that are related to Thanksgiving, and we don't necessarily have to sing them. (laughs) I mean, it's fun if you do, Um, but uh, you could read them. And so I want to encourage you to consider songs like We Gather Together. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. He chastens and hastens his will to make known. The wicked oppressing now cease from distressing. Sing praise to his name. He forgets not his own. Beside us to guide us, our God with us joining, ordaining, maintaining his kingdom divine. So from the beginning, the fight we are winning. Thou, Lord, were at our side. All glory be thine. We all do extol thee, thou leader triumphant, and pray that thou still our defender will be. Let thy congregation escape tribulation. Thy name be ever praised. O Lord, make us free. Do you have a favorite song of thanksgiving? Maybe it's the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Is there a song of thanksgiving that bubbles up within you? Is there a hymn of thanksgiving you you love to sing? You could turn it into a prayer today. Hymns are sung prayers. Maybe uh, for you on thanksgiving, it is for the beauty of the earth, the, um, the pure point hymn from the very, very early 1900s or late 1800s. For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love from which our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the beauty of each hour, of the day and of the night, hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For yourself, best gift divine, to the world so freely given, agent of God's grand design, peace on earth and joy in heaven. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. What are your prayers of thanksgiving today? What are the songs of thanksgiving um, you are singing in your heart of hearts and in your life together. I'm noting that um, a record number of folks are on the road today traveling for Thanksgiving. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're listening right now on your way to Grandma's house. Through the woods we go um, to Grandma's house for Thanksgiving. I don't know. Hopefully you're not traveling through the snow, but it's quite possible that you are. 55 million people traveling for Thanksgiving, most of them by car. And so if that's you, may God grant you grace and mercy um, on this particular 
Thanksgiving Day. Be patient with others. Go slow. And every time you are stopped, like every time the traffic stops, I want you to lift up a prayer of concern for those who are at the front of that because their day has just been disrupted in a way that is far worse than being inconvenienced by the extra time it's now going to take you to get to the place where you had planned to be. So let's be praying today for first responders. Let's be praying today for people who are working on this uh, Thanksgiving Day. Let's be praying for those who are spending this day by themselves. And if you are by yourself today, I want you to consider seeking out an opportunity to serve someone else. And you're going to say to yourself, well, that is super counterintuitive. Like, I'm the one that's alone. I'm the one that's lonely. People should come serve me. Yeah, that's not going to go very well for you. Like, I'm just telling you in advance, it would be better for you and certainly better for others if you would take the opportunity today to find a way to serve someone else. There is, I guarantee you, someone out there whom you could serve. You may not be able to serve them a meal, but you could serve up a conversation You could serve up a smile. You could let someone else know that they are seen and that they are cared about and that God is worthy to be praised on this Thanksgiving day. He is worthy of our thanks and our gratitude, regardless of the circumstances we find ourselves in. So stuck in traffic, God is still worthy to be praised. Alone on Thanksgiving, God is still worthy to be praised. Not enough money this year for a turkey, God is still worthy to be praised. We give thanks to God in the midst of all circumstances. Not because of all circumstances, but in the midst of all circumstances. We are a people whose hearts are filled with gratitude. Every good and perfect gift flows from the Father above. And so think today about all the things for which you are grateful to God. Make that list, that litany of reasons, the the list of people, the gifts of material provision and the immaterial gifts as well. Thank God today for that which is stored up in heaven. Thank God today for for the gift of prayer, certainly for the gift of Jesus. Thank God today for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank God today for the gift of the Great Commission. God has actually given you something on earth to do, a purpose. And it's a privilege to know what that purpose is. And then it's a privilege to have everything that's necessary for the accomplishing of God's will in your life. God has already prepared in advance good works for you to do. And God has poured out every spiritual blessing necessary for the accomplishing of his will in and through your life. Think about that today. There is nothing that you need to accomplish God's will in your life that he has not already freely given. Consider that. So now, what makes it onto your count count your blessing list now? Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Well, let's start with um, the day that God has given you, the gift of life itself the provision of of the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments, the gift of prayer, the gift of song, the access to the very throne room of the living God. My friend, you are rich in blessings today. Let's be sure that we're counting the things that matter and we are not counting um, all all the things for which we might be angry or resentful, you know, counting all the things that, you know, well, I got, I got a list. Yeah, once you throw that list out for a moment and make a list of all of the ways in which God has extended himself because of his character, because of his great love for you, thank him today for daily bread. And even if you say, you know what, I, I don't have what others have today in terms of what's on the Thanksgiving buffet or who's seated around the Thanksgiving table. Well, give thanks to God for his fellowship. Sit down at table fellowship with the Lord today and break bread with him. And then thank him that Christ has been made known to you in the breaking of the bread. Could you do that today? Could you do that with someone else? Could the day be redeemed in that particular way, in this particular season? How far would you go for Thanksgiving? You know, there's this time that 10 lepers come to Jesus um, to be healed and He heals them all, but only one returns to give thanks. And he says, with sadness, were not all 10 healed? Yes, yes, Lord, all 10 were healed. Well, where are the other nine? Are there there things that we have failed to give thanks 
to God for? Things that we have credited to others? Maybe we've credited our healing to the doctor or to the drug or to the surgery instead of crediting the great physician. Are there things that you have credited to others that really God deserves the credit? Just a thought today. Just a thought today. Hey, um, again, what is uh, what is on your list in terms of songs you sing, pieces of artwork that draw you um, into not just uh, the day of Thanksgiving, but the spirit of Thanksgiving? Um, are there passages of Scripture? Are there books that you have read? What What is in your treasury of Thanksgiving? Leland Riken um, actually put together a treasury of Thanksgiving. It's illustrated poetry, prose, and praise. Um, it's, a, it's an incredible, it is a work of art. The book itself is a work of art, and it contains works of art. And it provides us opportunity to have, like, gateways into genuine Thanksgiving. So on this Thanksgiving day... Listen during this special edition of Mornings with Carmen to my conversation with Leland Riken, a treasury of Thanksgiving. Thanks for listening to this special Best of Mornings with Carmen LeBurge on Faith Radio. Leland Riken is, um, well, he's a bit of an unusual character. He is the author of more than 50 books on biblical and literary topics. He is the literary editor of the ESV Bible, an emeritus professor of English at Wheaton College in Illinois. And he comes to us today with one of the most beautiful books um, I have ever beheld, A Treasury of Thanksgiving. It is illustrated poetry, prose, and praise. Leland Riken, welcome to Mornings with Carmen. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. This is a beautiful book. Yes, it is. I want to pay tribute to my editor for the visuals. She was not only an English major, but an art major, and it shows. Let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about the power of not only the written word, but let's talk about the power of visual media to move us. I mean, you know, specifically here in the in the direction of giving thanks or thanksgiving, but even just more generally, the the power of the visual to move us? The uh, imagination is one of the means by which we uh, assimilate the truth. And we live in an image-oriented culture. Now, I'm also verbally oriented, as I know you are, nonetheless. Images are a way of expressing truth and moving us to the truth. And in our for our topic today, moving us to Thanksgiving. What we see counts for a lot. Let's talk about um, let's talk about Thanksgiving. Obviously, you know the people of God give thanks throughout the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. We can highlight some of those, um, but maybe even just the practice of giving thanks. Um, maybe just talk about the act of Thanksgiving. I want to evoke my concept of a ladder of gratitude. It has five steps. It is very useful. It was an organizing framework. Here it is. Thanksgiving begins when we receive a benefit or favor. The second step is we recognize that we have received this. It registers with us. If we're not aware of having received a benefit, we're not going to be thankful for it. Now, the third step is we it dawns on us that this benefit or blessing came to us from a source. Gratitude, then, is feeling grateful toward this source, but that yet does not attain thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, fifthly, comes when we express our gratitude to the source of this gift. Oh, that is so good. All right, so I've received a benefit. Um, It registers with me that I am in receipt of a benefit, and then it dawns on me that that benefit came from a source, and I feel grateful, but then there is the act, the actual expression of gratitude, and that is the giving thanks. That is the thanksgiving. Yes, I'll just add that my wife observed at that point, giving thanks is relational. It is expressed to someone and ultimately to God. 
Hmm. That is so good. Um, tell her we appreciate appreciate that note. Um, which I'll, I'll I think just that... add that at any point on this ladder, if we stop, we have not moved as far as we can. Hmm. Yeah, I guess um, you know what comes immediately to mind are the ten lepers whom Jesus healed, and only one actually returned to give thanks. And Jesus was like, "Where are the other nine? Were they not healed as well?" Um, they got off the ladder at some point. That very good insight. Incidentally, Charles Spurgeon preached a really great sem- uh, sermon, Where Are the Nine? And I excerpted that as one of my entries. Yes, which takes us into the book. So nice segue there. Um, talk with us about what is included in a treasury of Thanksgiving. I can only imagine that deciding what what you were going to limit here, what you were going to put in, because this this volume could be volumes and it could be enormous. So how did you make the selections um, that are included in Treasury of Thanksgiving and maybe describe some of the things that are in it for people who don't have it in their hands? Well, let me take you behind the scenes and surprise you. I came up with 40 good selections. I reread the book twice in preparation for this interview. I enjoyed every minute of it. There's not a duplicate in the whole book. That's how varied Thanksgiving is and ways of thinking about it. Every entry is unique. Nonetheless, having said that, this is a high-quality literary anthology, and I did not struggle to find 40 good entries, but 40 was the limit for the kind of entry that I want. I was um, very delighted by the range of genres that found their way into this anthology. It just alerted me. The subject of Thanksgiving is more varied than we think it is. So that was a real reward for compiling the anthology. Would you, um, is there one that comes to mind if I were to ask you to share one? Is it is it a poem that comes to mind? Is it a story? Is it a psalm? Is there one that comes to mind um, just in my asking that you say, yeah, let's talk about that one. I'm going to, again, surprise you. I cannot choose one. I anticipated this question. <laughs> um, they're all fa- a favorite with me. I was just amazed when I reread the volume. Every one had its own insight and edification and delight. But mm. if we're uh, looking for one, why not the first entry? It is the hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. Um The canon of standard Thanksgiving hymns that are sung in um, church services um, is not as large as we think. I myself speak of the five standard ones. Now, I did include more than five in the anthology, but I do believe that kind of the prototypical Thanksgiving text is, Now Thank We All Our God. It was written by a... um, um, pastor in Germany who lived toward, through a terrible decade, he presided over 4,000 funerals during his stay. He arrived in the city of Ellenburg the year before the Thirty Years' War. He died the year after. And yet he is the one who has this exuberant, all-out call to thanksgiving. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices. And it just goes from there. Um, he can't contain himself regarding the gratitude he feels. So it's it's a particularly um, it, epitomizing text, I would say. But I say again, I read all the entries with equal delight. It won't surprise you that the Treasury of Thanksgiving, which is illustrated poetry, prose, and praise, it won't surprise you that in addition to hymns, there are psalms um, of Thanksgiving included in here. There are also excerpts from the Book of Common Prayer. I particularly enjoyed those. I thought that the entry on page 77 was um, was so much like what is happening today in, um, in the effort to acknowledge um, every moment holy and some, some written anthologies of, of prayers that have been written, you know, in a contemporary period of time that evoke the same spirit, like, how in every moment, regardless of what's happening, for rain, for abundant provision, for deliverance from illness, for a mother's safe delivery of a child um, at the communion service, those are the entries on page 77 and 78 of A Treasury of Thanksgiving. But they reminded me of sort of this 
contemporary effort to regard every moment as holy and find reason in every moment to give God thanks. Not that we're Amen. necessarily giving thanks for what is happening, but we are giving thanks in the midst of what is happening. Amen. There are some wonderful talk- there are some wonderful female uh, poets in the anthology, let me just add. They they had a really beautiful touch. You want to reflect on one of those? Um the the, the uh, women that I included are little known poets. Uh, I think of one who's the, the author escapes me, but she praises God for the seemingly negative features of life. She she structures her poem around um, two line units in in each four line stanza. I don't thank you for X, and she names something that we would think would be the best of the best, uh, a material blessing. But instead, she thanks God for what we would regard as an experience we might try to avoid, and yet she expresses thanks for that. Mm, So good. So good. There are um, readings and excerpts in this book from some very classical pieces of literature that you may not have thought to yourself, wow, there would be um, something for the treasury of Thanksgiving in Robinson Crusoe, but there is. Um, there might not be something you would you would say, you know, like immediately in your mind, oh, you know, that would be an opportunity to give thanks or um, a piece of literature to uh, to focus on um, in terms of Thanksgiving. And yet there it is. Um, and so I do think there's a lot of surprise and delight here. I appreciated Martin Luther's rendering thanks to our maker. Um, I just think there are some wonderful classic reflections in here as well. Um, again, uh, in addition to passages of scripture and prayers from the Common Book of Prayer, just just totally delightful. Again, we're talking with Leland Riken. It is a treasury of thanksgiving, illustrated poetry, prose, and praise. Do you have a favorite passage of scripture that comes to mind or that you turn to um, on Thanksgiving? Do you have a favorite hymn um, or song in your treasury? Maybe there's a piece of art that comes to mind when um, when I just say um, Thanksgiving. So in addition to what is going to be on your Thanksgiving table, what is, um, what's going to be in your Thanksgiving conversation? What are you going to weave into the conversation on that day that will evoke Thanksgiving to God? And maybe um, take a moment to consider where you are on this ladder of gratitude. Do you recognize that you have received a benefit? Has it registered as such? Has it dawned on you that that benefit came from a source and that that source is God? Do you feel grateful to God for that? And then have you expressed that gratitude? Have you actually taken the step of thanksgiving, that relational connection, giving thanks to God for the benefits, um, the blessings, the goodness that he has poured into your life? We're going to continue our conversation with Leland Riken here in just a moment. You're listening to Mornings with Carmen. It might feel like it's too late, but it is not too late to make a difference this year. There is still time. Faith Radio is listener supported, and you make it possible to reach more people in more places with the good news of Jesus. But time is running out. So before the end of the year, give your best gift to make an eternal impact by calling or texting the word GIVE to 877 877- Nine three three two four eight four, or by clicking the donate button at myfaithradio.com. Thank you so much. Continuing our conversation with Leland Riken, among other things, he is now the author of A Treasury of Thanksgiving, illustrated poetry, prose, and praise. Leland, why don't we um, give folks a sample of, of what is in the book? Would you be willing to read to us from pages 152 and 153 the Thomas Akempis piece, giving thanks when our station in life is modest? Yes. Let me uh, give just a bit of context here. Uh, this is from The Imitation of Christ. That book, according to many sources, is next to the Bible, the most translated book in the world. I am the one who gave this excerpt the title, Giving Thanks When Our Station in Life is Modest. I happen to resonate with that because I come from humble stock, and in fact, I self-identify right to the present day 
as the farm boy from Iowa. So here is Thomas Akempis writing on the subject, my heading, giving thanks when our station in life is modest. O oh Lord, grant me to be mindful of your benefits, both general and special, with great reverence and diligent meditation, that thus I may be able worthily to give you thanks. I know that I cannot render to you due thanks for even the least of your mercies. I am unworthy of all the good things that you have given me, and when I consider your majesty, my spirit fails. All things that we have in soul and body, and whatsoever things we possess, whether outwardly or inwardly, naturally or supernaturally, are your good gifts, and prove that you, from whom we have received all, are good, gentle, and kind. All things come from you. Therefore, in all things, you should be thanked. You know what is best to be given to each person. Why this person has less and that more is not for us, but for you to understand. Wherefore, O Lord God, I reckon it a great benefit not to have many things that bring praise and glory outwardly and after the thought of people. Nothing should be... so. Nothing should so rejoice the one who loves you and knows your benefits as your will in him and the good pleasure of your eternal providence, wherewith he ought to be so contented and comforted that he would willingly be held of small and low account, rather than to be more honorable and greater in the world than others. For your will and the love of your honor ought to go before all things and to please and comfort him more than all benefits that are given or may be given to himself. Be thankful, therefore, for the smallest blessing, and you shall be worthy to receive greater. For the least be unto you even the greatest, and let that which is of little account be unto you as a special gift. If the majesty of the giver be considered, nothing that is given shall seem small and of no worth. For that is not a small thing that is given by the Most High God. Whoever seeks to retain the favor of God needs to be thankful for the favor that is given and patient in respect of that which is taken away. Let him pray that it may return and be humble so that he not lose it. God is generous in giving us the grace of comfort, but people do ill in not giving God thanks for it. Thus, the gifts of grace are not able to flow unto us because we are ungrateful to the author of them and do not return them wholly to the fountain from whence they flow. For grace always becomes the portion of him who is grateful, and God takes it away from the proud and gives it to the humble. The saints of God are those who ascribe to God all the good that they have received, and they desire that God shall be praised above all things. Therefore, give thanks to God for his grace. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. That is one of the entries in a treasury of thanksgiving, the illustrated poetry, prose, and praise. Um, the voice you heard, Leland Riken, also the the author, compiler, editor of the book. Um, Leland, um, can I ask you a different question about a different thing? Sure. <laughs> so... I think it's hard for some of us to imagine what the editor um, of a Bible would do and what the literary editor of a Bible would do. So can you explain to us when you served as the literary editor of the ESV, like what were you doing? It was a very easy job for a very simple reason. All of the translators were people of excellent literary and stylistic intuitions they knew as much as I did. Now, it is true that I was the literary person, and all the others were people who knew Hebrew and Greek. They were biblical scholars. It was an easy job in as much as only occasionally did I emerge as the authority on a subject. They had excellent stylistic intuitions. I'll let you in on a secret. I served the committee best by being a generalist. That is, I was not a biblical scholar, and I asked questions that the biblical scholars didn't. So I served them very well by being, in effect, the educated general reader. Uh, it was a great experience. I enjoyed it. I think it's a bit honorary to single me out, as as the uh, propaganda for the translation does, as the literary stylist. 
that was my role, but I was more a generalist on the committee and, you know, kind of lent sanction to this or that decision, but the decision already, in effect, had been made by the committee. Well, thank you for your work. Um, for those of us who enjoy the ESV and rely upon it, um, just just a statement of gratitude. I, I recognize um, the benefit that I receive from the labor of those who uh, translated and um, and then edited and then produced um, the ESV. And so thank you for that good work. I just wanted to express my gratitude to you. Um, You're welcome. It I, was a once in a lifetime experience for me. And uh, <laughs> so great. the wives went along to all the meetings. So they became a kind of uh, community of um, people, part of the, the process in a way. That's so cool. All right. Well, let's, um let's give, uh, let's give gratitude to God for, all his many gifts, and thank you um, for this conversation today. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. That is Leland Riken. Um, we are grateful to God for this gift produced through his labor, a treasury of thanksgiving. For whom are you giving thanks to get today? Um, for what? Thank you to those of you who have uh, chimed in on the text line, telling me some of the things that you have planned for Thanksgiving, the people you intend to Share it with the good things you intend to do, uh, Grandma Ruby's fresh orange cranberry relish that you intend to eat, um, the twice-baked sweet potato. That one sounds good. And, yes, um, I'm just going to go ahead and say if you're going to serve something gelatinous and it's not just jello, yes, I'm not eating that. That will be reserved all for you um, on the side dish, uh, side dish array. So, What have you got planned for Thanksgiving Um, and who's going to be at the table or where are you going? Maybe you're going to serve Thanksgiving to others um, who otherwise wouldn't have a meal. I'd love to know about that. You can always text me 877-933-2484. When we think about Thanksgiving and we think about giving thanks to God from whom all blessings flow, um, I just want you to acknowledge all of the things that are on that list this year. And it might not be obvious at first because the things that might quickly come to mind are the losses or the grievances or um, the, the things where you have lack or need. Today, let's focus on what we do have. Let's focus on um, the gifts of God that flow so freely from the bounty of his grace Let's give thanks to God on this day. Let's do so in prayers. Let's do so in praise. Let's do so in psalms of thanksgiving. Let's do so in acts of gratitude and in the sharing of God's goodness with others. You're listening to Mornings with Carmen. Thanks for listening to this podcast of Mornings with Carmen from Faith Radio. If you haven't, you can subscribe to automatically receive the podcast through iTunes or the Google Play Music app. That way you never miss an episode. It's also available anytime at MyFaithRadio.com.